So good afternoon. It's already the last session, or we just have one keynote, but almost at the end of the event. Um, so I'm going to share you everything you want to hear about the Joomla ACL. Um, a quick introduction. I'm from the Netherlands. I live in a city called Weisp. Uh, if you're nearby, come by and visit us. Um, some might know me from rowing um, in the Netherlands in these kind of boats. I'm the one over here. And others might know me of the Stroopwafel, a Dutch cookie, which I once created in a Joomla shake. But today, I brought you the real ones. So if you would like to try, <laughs> also at the end of the day, so probably you can use it. So if you want, try one and please pause it forward. I should have plenty of them. I will bring another package, so as long as you, you can please take it and pause it forward. Yeah. yeah, thank you. If you like them, you can have more than one. So, so um, I really enjoy contributing to Joomla, um, locally in the Netherlands, but also internationally. I'm one of the members of the community leadership team. Um, in the Netherlands, I have a Joomla agency. It's called Perfect Web Team, and we're focusing on mainly only uh, building Joomla website with a great team. And some others might know me from my extension around Joomla ACL called ACL Manager. You can write everything down I'm posting in, uh, in this slide, but I will post my slides on my website afterwards, so uh, you will find all reference over there. So Joomla ACL, um, I can go quite a lot of directions during this session. But it's also based on what you guys already know about Joomla ACL who would like to learn. So who ever used the Joomla ACL system already? Okay. And who in this room is an extension developer that would like to know how to implement ACL in their extension? Okay. So you're mainly all are trying to find more information about how to work with the Joomla ACL system to set up your website, right? If I understand it correctly. Great. So ACL. ACL stands for Access Control List. And that's a, ni a nice wording. And in Joomla, to make it easy, we basically have a kind of two systems. One, to control the visibility of content, which you can find with articles, modules, uh, plugins, menu items, which uh, with access levels like public, super users, registered, special. That's one part of the ACL system. The other part of the ACL system is about the actions you can perform on certain <coughs> pages. So can a user group edit an article or create something new? You find that all around in Joomla on many places. So these are two systems which might be a kind of confusing and we're also looking into for uh, one of the next versions of Joomla to see <coughs> if we can combine them to one because that will make more clear. But for the time being, we have to work with it. So to understand the ACL concept, I want to go back to the basics first to explain some of the concepts. In Joomla, the ACL system works as follows. You have a user on the website, and you can have as many users as you want. And then we have the permissions. So what you configure if somebody can create something. There are several basic actions in Joomla available. Uh, so among them are the site login, who can log in on the front end of the website, who can log in on the admin of the website, the offline access, who can log in on the website when it's turned offline. We have the super admin and configure action, so who can actually configure the component options of, for example, uh, the article manager, like is the title being uh, displayed yes or no. All those settings can be controlled with this action. Another action is the access administrator <coughs> interface. That means 
when you allow that action, someone can access a component in the backend. And then we have a couple actions left that are mainly about an object itself. So for example, an article, who can create an article, delete an article, edit an article, edit state. Edit state is everybody knows what it is. Who knows what edit state is? Yeah, so edit states means if some a user can change the status, so is something published or unpublished? Or empty the trash, that's also a state change. So that's what edit state means. And edit own? Yeah, so that's correct. So when you allow the edit own action, it means that the user can edit only his own articles. That's what. So we have the user the permissions, and then we also have the groups in Joomla. The last part of the ACL system is the access levels, so we can actually view content. Why I'm showing this? A user is always assigned <coughs> to one or more user groups. The permissions are being assigned to a group two. The access levels consist out of one or more multiple uh, user groups. So that means that you cannot sign permissions directly to a user. Quite often I get the question, can I set up a specific access for one user? No, you can't. Or basically, yes you can, but you first have to create a new user group specifically for that user, and then assign the user to that group and configure the permissions. So it's not possible to directly assign the permissions to the user. The group is always in the center. Everything around the ACL system turns around the user groups. So to have it all in one overview, this is basically very practical with the Joomla ACL system explained. All my pictures. <laughs> Joomla has a kind of inheritance between all kinds of levels. And actually, when you look at Joomla, there we're not really talking about levels, but I prefer to talk about ACL levels because it makes things more clear. So when I talk about levels, I'm talking about four levels. The global configuration, where you can configure permissions. Then we have another level, which is called the component permissions. So for each component in Joomla, you can again configure the permissions. Then we have categories and modules, for example, which also can be configured. And in Joomla itself, we only have the fourth level, which is the article permissions. For all of these levels, you can set the permissions. That means that there's some kind of inheritance between those levels. So when we go back to the scheme, and I'm going to do it over here. By default, when you install Joomla and you don't configure any permissions, a user group can't change or do anything. So it, by basics, they are not allowed to perform any action. That's something really good to keep in mind because I notice that a lot of people are directly s changing a permission on a global level. No, I don't want my users to delete content. So they set the global configuration to not allowed, which basically doesn't make sense and only make it difficult because by default, it's not set, which means not allowed. So let's allow an action. So for example, when we allow the create action for the global configuration, it's inheriting down all the other levels. So when you allow something for the global configuration to create, they, they can create within the article component, within the banner component, within the module component, or around the Joomla, they can create something. If you want to prevent that they can create something for a specific category, you can set that category to denied. And then they can't change something for that specific category. Another option is that you leave the global configuration to not set and only allow the create action for, for example, the article manager. In that case, you set the permissions on level two and they can only change the articles or create articles in the com article component or in the banner component if you allow that. Then you have another option if you want to allow access 
to your web, uh, website for a group to only create articles in one category, you can also leave everything to not set and only allow that for a specific category. <coughs> it also means that when you set something on the highest level to deny it, but you try to allow it for a component, it's not going to work. It will turn into a conflict. That's because denied in Joomla will always win. And that's a really important rule in Joomla, <coughs> denied will always win. So it will always overrule any allowed from any lower level. That's why I always suggest to try to prevent to use the denied action as long as possible. You can better only allow for the areas that they need to access rather than allow everything and restrict the access. It's more flexible. To make it even more complicated, there's another way of inheritance in Joomla. So we had the levels, but the second inheritance is between the user groups. If you allow an action for the manager, it will automatically mean that the administrator group can do the same action as well. Because the per permissions are inherited from the manager to the administrator, or the register to the <coughs> author, to the editor, to the publisher. It's inheriting all the way down to your structure. Joomla has all these user groups by default. Any, anyone know why these groups are there? More time? Compatible with uh, earlier Joomla. Exactly. These groups are only here to be compatible if you migrate from an earlier Joomla 1.5 installation to Joomla 3, for example. This structure is pretty similar as the ones in 1.5. But this makes it more easy for you to configure the settings because in your head it works a bit the other direction than you would expect. I will go into a very practical example in a couple minutes where we're going to demonstrate it, but I always suggest to remove the user groups where possible and create new ones and configure them as needed. So you keep the overview of all the permissions in your website. Those inheritance between the levels and the user groups are combined in Joomla. So when we have an overview in where we see the user groups, for example, registered author, editor, and publisher, and the levels with the global configuration, the component, and the category, when we allow, for example, the create action, it means that the nested user groups inherit that permission, but also all categories within a component. So you see that one allowed is inheriting in multiple directions. The same when we will do it in the other side. When you will delete some, uh, deny something for the editor, you see that the publisher, which is nested under the uh, editor, can't perform the action too. And you can't change, for example, for a specific category for the publisher that they can do something because it's denied. So. Why actually bother about the Joomla ACL system? Whoever uses it actively in their ACL, for in their Joomla website project, for what reason? Provide specific material for a group of people, an article or menus or something. So you want to prevent that all people that have access to the backend? Uh, sorry. But, uh, they don't want the kids' uh, pictures to be public on uh, school. It's going to be only for the community, or only for parents that can go and see the... Uh, yeah, so to restrict access for partner groups that they can only access the information that is needed for them. Any other options? Other admins who use it from the front end, so that they don't need to go to the back end to edit articles. So, so only the admins can access the front end. And do modifications and publish them later. So, like a peer review system there. You and you're allowing them for the back end? Okay, so you're using the ACL system to basically set up a kind of workflow in Joomla where uh, a certain user group can create articles, but they are not published yet, and others need to approve it. That's a great example, too. Other examples? <laughs> Sorry, 
Human forget to uh, run the register for that type of that information. So we will take it uh, at least to our Yeah, so you want to allow them to access certain parts. Yeah, for the list for the users. Yeah. I think another very important option is, why not of course, but usability. Because when you allow people access to your backend, do they really need to have access to everything in the backend? Have you ever looked over the shoulder of your client when they logged into the backend of your website? <coughs> Would they? Are they getting confused in Joomla? Right? They see so many options within Joomla. With the Joomla ACL system, you can only show the components, the items that are relevant for their use. So a very practical example, what we do with our clients quite often, is that we do provide them a super user account for the website so they can access anything. Which means if they're not happy with us anymore, they can go to another company. But for the practical daily use of the website, we create one specific account that only allows them to access the areas they need to have access to. It prevents a lot of confusing, uh, confusing for the users of the website. It prevents the people to think. Like this is an example of uh, milk in the Netherlands. One company thought, oh, maybe we can show how much milk is actually in a package left rather than trying to find out by just making a small window. Don't make me think. There's a great book by Steve Crook as well. If you ever want to read something about don't make me think and users, find that. Search for that. A, a good recommendation of it. Um, besides that, users are really looking for it. And especially if you're, and there were not that many extension developers over here, but I can tell you that a lot of users that are building websites for their clients want to restrict access to one or more components in the backend. Um, this is an example of my ticket system of ACL Manager where all these people requested to limit access to Zoo, for example. Another example, users want to restrict access to FutureMark only, and specifically, only to view the orders, for example, not to configure entire virtual mark, but only that the, the people that are on the website can see the orders. Also a big list of all the contacts that's been requested. It's even longer than Zoom. <laughs> this was very practical, right? What about doing a live demo? What about doing a demo where we set up access to only the article manager. Good idea? Okay, let's do that. So, here we are with a very default Joomla installation. Joomla 4.5, and I installed it with an, uh, sample data, nothing else. Good. So what do you recommend me to start with? The goal is that we allow a user group, let's call them content editors, to access the article manager in the backend only. Where do I start? Any suggestions? They should not have access to the user group. They should not have access to the user group. Yeah. And uh, when, I, when I created a, given a ticket manager, and as manager I logged in, I'm able to go and see the user. And you see the more then. Yeah. So when you assign a user to the manager user group, they see more, right? That's, that's correct. The first step, I would suggest, or you had a suggestion as well? Create the user group. Create the user group. Thank you. Great suggestion. So as I shared in my slides before, I always suggest to create one specific user group for, <coughs> for example, the content manager. So here, do I need to make it big, slightly bigger? Yes. So, um, is it visible for anyone? Everyone? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I can create a new user group. But I'm going to do one other thing first. And I mentioned that during my talk already. So we'll listen carefully. <laughs> Creating new user. Oh, one, one second. <laughs> Creating a new user 
same hierarchy only was showing to me. Okay, no, that's not that's not the first step I'm going to make. Remove the not use the equality. Right, take another stroke off. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use to delete all the user groups I don't need. So these are the default user groups. Should I remove all? Or should I keep a couple of them? Keep a couple of them, right? Otherwise, it's getting complicated, I guess. So which one should I keep? Public? I want to remove that, another one? Sorry? Super user, great. Otherwise, I can't log in myself anymore. Another one? Guest, why should I keep guest? Level. Just, uh, basically, uh, on, on. You're talking about anti of the reg yeah. register, basically. Yeah. So, so the guest group is a user group that is by default anyone that's visiting the website. Yeah. So that means that you can uh, make a menu item visible for only the people that are not logged in on your website. Uh, so as soon as they log in, for example, the login module is no longer visible. So therefore, I really recommend to keep the guest group. You try to not use the same uh, function with the public user group. I mean, the people who is visiting or website not logging in could see only a mod. Yeah. What so you your question is, why can't we do that with the public user group? Uh, the reason for that is that the public group is the parent group of all user groups. So when we would allow um, a, a menu item to public, anyone will still see it. So therefore, there's a specific guest access level that will show it. We can show that later on in the example as well, if you want to, how that works. Is there any other group I would like to keep? Or must keep? Registered? We can discuss that. Um, yes, in general, I would say keep the registered user group. So people, when they sign up, they only can log in on the front end, nothing else. So let's keep them as well. So anything else I should keep, uh, keep over here? Or I want the front end submission set up. I agree, but I'm going to create that myself with a new group to really control the actions that the user group have. So by now, I'm going to delete these uh, user groups left. So manager, administrator, author, editor, publish. And I have to do that twice. Okay. So we only have the public, guest, registered, and super user group left. Anything you notice over here? It's all on the public, right. We don't have any other nested levels anymore. <coughs> if we go back to my slides quickly, and let's find this one, it means that we eliminated one direction of inheritance. So if you're now checking the actions and can only come from the levels, uh, the levels rather than nested user groups. The administrator, no, but, but it makes things a lot easier. Go back to my demo website. Okay, so anything else? Or should I move on? Move on? I do one more thing. Super users. Does that really describe what people can do? Does that really describe a group well? I'm a super user. My clients always say, yeah, I'm super. So I'm part of that group. No. Let's change it to administrator or, or admin. So simple, to understand that this group has access to the backend and full permission. You can change any title you would like of these groups. Change it on your website to something that's more understandable for your clients or whoever is using your website. So the next step.
Content Manager, for which I would like to uh, allow access to the backend article component only. And I make it the group parent. In that way, no permissions are set at all, and I'm going to configure this specifically. So now I can add it, a new user to it. Content manager, save close. Okay, my new user is created. What should I do? Can I test it? Yeah, I need to set up the permissions, right? Okay. So we're going to do that step by step. Um, first of all, we want the user group to allow access to login in the backend, right? So we go to the global configuration of Joomla, click on the permission tab indeed, find the content manager group, and set the administrator login to allow. As you can see right now, you can select the settings over here, and in the right column, the calculated settings are displayed. So that is the actual value. You also notice I changed allowed, but the calculated setting is still not allowed. I first have to save it before this change is active and visible. So again, I go to the permission tab, and now we can see that the administrative login is allowed. Okay, so what's the next step? Content management manager a part of the public group, and I think public has access to the administrator login as well, right? <coughs> the public user group has all settings to not set. So they can't do anything. They can't log in on the site, they can't log in on the administrator, they can't do anything. So it, the content manager inherit all those settings from the public group, and now we're only going to allow the backend login. Yeah? So what's next? Any suggestions? Create an edit. Create an edit? Do I need to set it over here? Yes. I'm going to do it different. I first want to allow this user group access to the article manager only. That means that I need to allow the access administrator interface. But I'm not going to set it in a global configuration of the website. Because when I allow it over here, they can access Everything, correct. So I close this window, I go to the article manager, click on the option button, and again, there's a tab with permissions. We click on the content manager group, and we see the available actions for this component. What do you notice? Are there more or are there less actions available? Less. Correct. You don't see the admin login, site login, and offline login anymore because they're only applied to the entire website. We only see what is really applies to the article manager. So I want a user to access the article manager in the backend and change the access administrator interface to allow. Change it, save it, and quickly review if I did it correctly. Access administrator interface allowed, and the calculated setting is allowed. So let's try if we can log in with our test user that we created, if this works and they can only access the article manager. Usually, I always use another browser for testing. So, moving this. Oh, where's my. So I go to the website, and I use a different browser for testing the permissions for this user. The reason for that is that I don't have to log in, log out all the time with my admin account to test the settings. So it makes it a bit quicker to test. So in my Safari browser, I will use the tester, and in my Chrome browser, I will use the uh, admin login. So let's log in. Great. 
we're going to back him. <laughs> this is pretty clear for the client, right? <laughs> so there's something going wrong in the end. I don't see the article manager. Is there anything I forgot? Great, good shot. Never had that before that somebody guessed it once. You're saying, I have to, the module positions in the backend? Or? No, the module the, 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 the permissions of the modules. <coughs> yeah, so. What you're basically saying, the backend of Joomla consists out of modules. We have a, a menu, which is a module. We have a control panel with modules. <laughs> and Actually, we can't see anything right now. When we go back to my administrator account and go to extensions and the modules and filter for the administrator modules, you see all the different modules that are active in the backend. What you also can see is that the access of those modules, most of the modules, is set to special. The new user group I created is not part of this access level yet. So therefore, this user can't see the modules. So we're going to change that. I'm going to the access levels. And over here we see the access levels again. And we had to change the special one. And as you can see, only the admin group is included, but we're going to include the content manager group as well. But I'm also going to change the name from special to admin again. So it's clear that when you set an, uh, an access level to admin, it's only for the admins rather than special. What is special? It says nothing. So save it and close. Now I go back to my uh, user and refresh the page. Man, take another soup bubble. You're good. <laughs> Before I see the changes, I have to log out and log in. Do you also know why? Because the person is logged out and they have this admin account set up already. Perfect. You can send over here to the rest of the presentation. <laughs> no, so the, the session information is, uh, the, the login information is set in the session of the user. And because I didn't log out, log in, the old session is still active. So before seeing any changes of the mate to the access levels, you have to log out and log in again. So let's do that. Log out and log in again. And now, it looks a bit weird, but that's why I zoomed in. But when the client now access, a content manager now access the website, they only see the relevant items which you allowed access to. So that means that they can see the system with the control panel, which is the panel we are on right now, a content tab with articles, categories, and featured articles, and a help menu. That's all they can see right now. How many of you wondered how you can hide the help menu? Does everybody want to know or forget about it? <laughs> I see that question quite often, so I'm going to show it you quickly. For the help menu, it's not a component, so you, re you can't set permissions for it. But what you can do is we were in the uh, backend modules, and let's see, the admin menu is a module, <coughs> and we go to the settings. There's an option that says help menu, and when I set it to hide, save it, the user no longer see that menu. You can also disable or change the access levels of the modules displayed on the control panel or add your own modules if you want. But that's not something that's really relevant right now. So when the client goes to the article manager, they see the article manager. I'm going to quickly zoom out a little bit. Um, but that's great, but they can't do anything. Sorry, that? No, I don't have to log out. 
the reason that I can't do anything yet is that I haven't set any actions yet. That I didn't allow the create action, for example, or the publish, or uh, etc. So you can only access the control panel, but not change it. So before, to achieve that, we're going to change it. But another thing I actually would like to make it slightly more complicated is that I don't want the user to able to edit all articles and create articles all around in the website, but only for the block category. So they can only block. So I go back to the administrator interface, to the article manager and options, and click again on the permission tab. And here we see what this group can do right now. So basically we want to allow the create, edit, edit state, edit own, for example. But if I allow that over here in the article options, they can do it in all category. So I'm not going to change anything over here. I leave it all to not set. Instead, I'm going to the categories of the article manager and open the blog. And over here, you can see, again, a permission tab, level three. And once again, less actions are visible because the other actions like access administrator interface configure only apply for the entire article manager and not for specific categories. So I'm going to uh, allow the create action and I want them to be able to publish the articles themselves. And well, let's not allow the edit, but the edit own. The reason for that is that in if, for example, imagine that we have several authors or users that can blog. If I allow the edit, they can edit each other's articles within the category. By allowing only the edit own, they can only change their own articles. So let's save it. Look at the permissions again. And we now see that the create action is set to allow, the edit state action is set to allow, and the edit own action is set to allow. I know now go back to the article manager and refresh the page. And did we see any change? A new button, exactly. Is already the admin link? The, the, I can't click on the edit, right? Yeah. So. I can create a new article, so let's do that. I'm the, the blogger, so hello, Joomla World Conference. And save and close it. Oh, I was maybe a slightly too quickly because I wanted to show that I can only select the category I have access to. So the uncategorized category is no longer visible, only the bottom one. So close it again, and now you can see that I can edit this article because I didn't create it as a test user, the other articles. So I created this one and can edit it. So, hello, and let's publish it. So that's all working. The reason why we don't see all the other options in the, in the uh, editor is that we first have to filter for the category in that way. So when I select blog, you do see the other buttons. But I can't still change anything that's listed over here. I can't change, oh, the, in the block, yeah, that's correct. But oh, over here, I can't unpublish the articles in the category I don't have access to. So in this way, I've set up um, access to only created in the block article. What would be a next step you would like to achieve? I mean, uh, it's 6.30 or 4.30? How, how long do I have? Oh, right now. So, okay. Um, so let's do one other example of one of your requests. What is something that you would like to achieve with ACL? Anything? Okay, I'm going to give one quick example. For example, when you would like that your user is not only able to access uh, in the backend, 
but also in the front end. Oh. oh, there it is. And allow them to create articles. I'm going to try to log in. But you can't access the private section of this site. Anyone, any clue why I can't access it with my user on the front end? Sorry? The permissions? Yeah, exactly. So I only allowed action, a login action for the administrator. So therefore, they can't log in on the site itself. So I go back to the global configuration, level one, to the permission tab, the content manager group, and change the site login to allow. I save and close it. And now the user, and I'm going to refresh it quickly. Test, test. Can log in and create the post. It's working in the same way, and we can see that, again, we can only select the categories access to. When we go quickly to the menu item that allows that, uh, let's see where that actually listed. Uh, create a post. The view create article has several options. And as you can see, Joomla by default has the default category set to yes and selected block. So therefore, the user can only create in this article. But if you set this to no, it makes sure it's no longer looking at this setting, but at the ACL settings configured. So rather than really specify one category only, we can leave it to no, and then it looks at the Joomla ACL settings to see which category a user have access to. So I'm quickly going to the end of my slide, which is some resources. If you want to know more about the Joomla ACL system, I created, a, uh, added a couple links over here to find more information about it. In general, the Joomla ACL system is really something you have to try and work with. But if you follow the, the rules I provided in this session, you will uh, come a lot further. And to summarize them, always prevent to the denied action as long as possible. When you use denied, you make it yourself more complex. Reduce the number of user groups that are default available in Joomla. Remove them and create new user groups where you set only the permissions that are needed. By not using nested user groups, besides the public and then the groups under that, but not another level, you're making it yourself easier because the inheritance only comes from higher levels. So when you're wondering where a setting comes from in a uh, category, you always know it's from the component or the global configuration from that same group rather than to check all those groups with the settings. I hope you start implementing the ACL also for the end users of your website because they really will benefit of this and really make use of it. Good luck with it. Thank you. Are there any questions? I mean, let's do two questions. If they're in Joomla 4, they can get rid of all the groups already. I mean, there's a difference between one point four five and four. Is like yeah. I mean, nobody would upgrade from one point five to four. It's like uh, yeah. What I think that would be good would might might be if we, uh, for example, Joomla 4 had a script that's checking are there any users in those groups. If not, remove them. Uh, to make it clean. And another change that we could do is make sure that every new installation doesn't contain all those complicated use groups anymore. Maybe one group in when you install the, a sample data set, for example, for the blog web flash, where you have some settings set, but not the default that's all around even when you don't use any sample data. So that's, I think, a good next step. Well, I, I think the, how do you manage the backend uh, for the ease of use of our clients. It's a really good uh, new argument to, to use you because of course I have clients who want another few minutes back. So 
Extension developers, and if there are anyone in the room, I provided some resources as well to implement it in your own extension. But it really depends on what an extension developer implemented in their own component, what you can do. But the virtual developer in this example could certainly implement something that you can only see the paid status. That's something that's possible fairly easy with the ACL system. Yeah. Yeah, in the implementation. We already had our last call, the final keynote is about getting started. So enjoy the last keynote. And if you have any questions, I will be around. So find me, please. Thank you. Thank you.